Here. Council Member Kendall. Here. Deputy Mayor Warner. Uh, um, Council Member Warner. Uh. <laughs> here. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yeah, here. Mayor Moore. Here. Please stand for a silent prayer moment of reflection. We will now salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the coaster and the star ledger on January 6, 2016 and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Matters from the city council? Anybody? Oh, me. <coughs> Uh, just a reminder, on Saturday, April 30th, there will be a citywide cleanup. We'll be meeting here at City Hall between 8.30 and 9, and we'll be out from 9 to 12. There will be a shredder truck in the City Hall parking lot from 9 until 1. And there will also be a sign-up list for individuals who are looking to spruce up their property or do the minor exterior return, um, repairs, and this is going to be handled by Habitat for Humanity, and it's free of charge. Um, and also, there is going to be expungement. The next expungement seminar is May 7th at 11 a.m. at St. Stephen's Church, and it's really important that you come out. And if you've been out before, the laws have changed effective April 21st. So please come out, find out what the new laws are, and they may apply to you. And last, Mammoth Conservation Foundation is having a fundraiser for the Springwood Avenue Park on Sunday, May 1st at Tallulah's at 6 o'clock. And I hope residents will come out and support it. Thank you. Uh, just briefly, and there's a, I see a few faces that wasn't here Wednesday when I, um, myself and the council, thank, thank you for coming out for the rodeo. Thank you for, partic for participating in it, the staff, the different sponsors. It was a beautiful affair, and we truly appreciate it. Thank you again. Thank you real quick and thank you, Jesse. And again, I have to thank everybody for the Rodeo for Recreation. And I think on Monday night, I said we'd be between 30 and 35,000. The number is higher than that and it keeps on growing. And anybody who would like to write a check, it's uh, City of Asbury Park, One Municipal Plaza, Asbury Park, New Jersey, 07712, Attention Recreation Department. The check should be made out for Asbury Park Recreation Trust Fund. And it, this is to send children to our great summer camp, which is done in coordination with the Asbury Park Board of Education. It's a great six weeks, and we raised a lot of money. Again, we're, we're over the 35, we're approaching the $40,000 mark. We don't want to give a final number yet because more may come in, and we may have a couple of outstanding bills. But again, thank you all so much for giving to the children of Asbury Park. That's all I have, thank you. Matters from the city manager. At the workshop meeting on Monday, uh, the council asked for an update on the um, security cameras being operated by the police. The cameras are all in. We are waiting for Verizon approval to install on the three final um, poles. Uh, everything is working. Next steps is after those three get in is to do training and they will be live. Thank you. Matters from the city attorney. No matters to report at this time. Okay. We're on to item H, public participation. May I have a motion to open the public comment portion of the meeting with a three minute time limit for each speaker? Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? 
Yes. Council Member Kendall. Yes. Council Member Werner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. The public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will immediately rule such conduct out of order after appropriate warning may terminate any further comments from that speaker. Please come to the mic and state your name and address. Are Motion to close. <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> you speak up. Maybe they're not on. Ours are. Thank you. <clears throat> Tracy Rogers, 900 block of Monroe. Um, I'd like to see that, uh, thanks uh, the city manager to having the cars listed with the GPS, but I came across an article and I wanna know if all the city cars are listed with GPS. Jersey City Councilman accused of DWI driving city agency SUV at the time. Just for investigative reasons, I think all city cars should have GPS, not just. <coughs> the 2.9% pay taxes, I mean the uh, fees for the taxes, is that being overlooked or are we looking at different more options? Because you're paying $4,000 in taxes and paying a $120 fee to pay your taxes. I think that's kind of a little out of whack. <clears throat> also like to thank the city manager for emailing me back on the uh, Community Initiative Trust. And just a little history on it. That money was given from Asbury Partners to the city through the agreement. Now looking at the park, uh, the city manager said 157000 was used for the park. But actually, out of that trust, over 400000 has now been used for the park. And it wasn't your council, but in 2010, out of the same trust, a $725,000 settlement to Asbury Shores was taken out of this account, which, if you're looking at it, even with the 100,000 that's remaining, 500,000 of that plus the 700, that's over $1.1 $1 million that I think we could look at to say that could have been at the city a little bit better. Uh, also, the city plan for the housing. And I'm gonna go back to this. There's a New Jersey article that came out yesterday. Why is this New Jersey town starting flipping homes? It says Collingswood is taking their own money to take care of his abandoned properties. And I'm saying to myself, we have $2.4 million on hand. They have found it a better investment to better their city, taking money out of their capital budget. You have money that's been sitting for 10 years, which could be benefited for, used for the benefit it was supposed to, that you haven't used it. So I would like to know from each one of you, what do you feel about this? That you have 2.4 million and you have homes that can be given to low income and affordable people. Tracy, thank you. I know you're gonna reschedule that meeting. I was sick at so we can talk about this more in depth. And Michael, if you have any individual answers to the first couple questions, please. Uh, we didn't put GPS on all the cars as I've explained previously. Just due to cost, it's on public works and code enforcement, which are the most active users outside of police, which is a whole other issue. Uh, it will be on every car, but there is financial considerations, and we put it on the ones that had the most. I'm assuming you're talking about taxes about the online payment system? Yeah. Um, what's happened in the past, and the CFO is sitting over there, Mr. Guards can verify this, 
is that when the credit cards were paid for um, previously, it was actually paid for by everybody. Yeah. Um, so people who weren't using it were subsidizing those who were. This is now a straight user fee where if you're using it, you're using it. We did tweak, as I mentioned, the online system where we copied and pasted the surcharge amount, the percentages, or if it's a, I think it's like $1.50 if you use a, a bank card to the very front, so it's a, it's a little bit more up front. So there's two times where you see what the percentage charge would be. So what this does is it's actually taking less of a burden off of everybody, and it's more of a user fee. So they're not going to get two. Points. They get they get charged, but but what it was before was no, that I, everyone was I understand was everybody else's, but can we find and look at other options, maybe banks or relationships that we, we have. have that. It's it's part of it's the software that we use for our financial system admins. Admins <coughs> is the one that partners with with those aspects. We have no control over the the .dot net authorization of where it goes. It's admins that does it. I understand. I, I don't disagree with you, but I, they're yeah, the ones. I know that, other cities. I know that fee isn't because they're not using yeah, it. Tying they're, they're not. not tying in to what the admin software is. So what happens is that you pay. It gets tr credited to your account. There's other vendors other than Edmonds' is WIP that then we would have to manually process it. And it's cheaper, but then it's more on the back end. This is more a streamlined approach. And you can pay by check or come here with cash or money order. So there's, there's other avenues other than going online. Could we extend maybe five days in case somebody don't have to pay in that fee? State law is 10. Is yeah, that well, due May 1st? You get a 10-day grace period? Yeah, okay, so everybody should also know that in case, you know what I'm saying, that they do have that 10 day. Yeah. Thank you. And the housing? Um, I'll send the, the article out to everyone, and if, because I've read it myself, and is I believe. Is it the article that you sent? That no, I that was a New Jersey Spotlight article. Okay. The Collingswood article, and please correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. it stated that just one home was a $200,000 rehab, um, and that they were only able to do one home through their, their capital. Um, yeah, they because they don't have that type of money, but when you have 2.4 million and you can go and change in the mini agreement of the housing that you've been sitting on for 2.4 million, plus the money would come back after the sale, it works. We've argued that in the past, and as you know, the mayor and deputy mayor said, we'll sit down and discuss the merits of that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Rita? Yeah. That is 2010. That's before everyone's sitting here. It's before Mr. Gartz was here. Um, if you want the transaction log, oh, I have, I have it. Then I, I don't. So we're agreeing. I mean, you, you have to see it, but yeah, I don't. I've never seen the transaction. Total 400,000 out of that account, and now if you take the 100,000 that's left, if it's needed, then it would be almost half a million dollars. That's been put into I, the can't even say anything because I haven't looked at a transaction trail of any of these things or what the accounts are. And myself and the CFO will talk and we'll get the, the gist of it and I'll report back to the next meeting. Yeah, I just want to make sure if we're looking at a $900,000 park, if 750 from the grants that you said and then the CBG money and then we're looking at this 500000 we've gone over that park expense. Well, it, it, in my email to you, I, I asked you to just to send the OPA request for that project, too, because that will say where everything had been charged for. So yeah, I mean, it, it sounds like you're talking about two separate transactions, but I think I know what you mean. So myself and the CFO <coughs> will talk and get you everything that you, you're looking for. Well, I got the transact. I can actually just sign out for you. Okay. Hi, Brita Moreno, 8th Avenue. I know we've talked about this many times, but I just want to ask the city manager, uh, being you just came on the job, did you know that we gave the $3 million we borrowed to, uh, to build the senior center? Uh, I'm not happy with your answers about investigating. I'd like to see the master deed. Do I have to put in a request with Oprah for the master deed? Uh, you can. I haven't been able to find it here. What? I haven't found it in, in my office here. You can put in the OPA request. If we have it, we'll give it to you. If we don't, 
We don't have the document, but it is filed at the county. The master deed? It should be, yes. Yeah, but did you know that we uh, bonded $3 million for that building? For something that happened, I think, in 2009? Was that building built? 12? No. You knew that? Well, that's why I, you know, I'm objecting to this whole thing. The taxpayers are getting ripped <coughs> off royally with this deal, and it's got to be investigated. I don't know how, how much time you have spent on it, but it's really not a good deal. They have eight apartments upstairs, and they have stores downstairs, and we have one little floor. And if they were paying full taxes, which they're not, they also got a pilot program on top of that. You have to investigate that. That's very important. We're losing a lot of money with this deal. And I know <coughs> you're trying, but I don't think you know all the facts because she wasn't here. And neither was this council. I'm not blaming them. But it's got to be investigated and something has to be done. Fred, you were here, but nobody else was. So uh, well, to get the master deed, I have to put in a NOPA request, right? Yes, uh, you couldn't find it? Not in my office, no. Wow. Okay, that's all I wanted to say tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Jerry? Hello, Mayor and Council. Jerry Scrano Longbrand. And I heard the rodeo was really good. Sorry, I did, we didn't make it. Um, but I don't have the check ready. But anyway, um, what I want, <laughs> okay, what I wanted to say is, building on what Tracy said, I've been asking for the GPS, but I also want a decal on the car that says, like, come to Asbury Park, you know, the best city on the Jersey Shore, whatever, a positive logo, but all city vehicles should have a logo on it. And the GPS, I'm not worried about the guy running back and forth to Neptune. I'm worried about the people who go to Woodbridge or Tom's River. There's a lot of other places to stop between here and there, and I don't think the taxpayer should pay for that. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up is saying that something happened in 2009, 2010, I don't think really is the correct answer. The answer is we're going to look into it and get, please give us some more information because it's not ancient history what Tracy or Terry were talking about. And Fred was the lawyer during that time that we have access to that ancient past five years ago. The other thing I wanted to say is um, we talked about the abandoned houses. They're selling houses on the west side for sixty, forty thousand dollars, and you have organization here begging you for free land. Those homes that are sold that cheap should be owned by charity or us and sold as affordable housing, not to be used as an investment property that brings eighteen hundred dollars rent average for a three bedroom. If you want the town to get better, we need home ownership, and. I didn't know how much money you have available, but it should be taken, someone should be looking into that or set up another committee for that. And then the other thing about missing money, Rita found out when they, with the health care, with the million dollars that Terry Reedy tried to bury with emergency funding. This is just not one episode that happened, there's a series of them, and they should be investigated. And I suggest Terry should go send a letter to some organization to investigate it if you guys can't handle it. Someone need to. Someone has a legitimate complaint about missing funds. It shouldn't be. Well, we don't know about it. It's ancient history. It's not. Thank you very much. I, I think we have our financial ship in 99.9 percent .9 good order. When we first got elected in 2013, oh, we found there was some there was mistakes on the city's part, mistakes on some. Pot no developers and so we've worked 99.9% .9 of those out. I think lately you've seen the past couple of meetings we've been given sewer money back to people because the city was overcharging them. So it works both ways. And we and have a finance, we have a finance. new tax collector, a new city manager and uh, everything's 100% above board and you're right and we will look into that information as far as like and it's not being a side it was 2009 we weren't here. We're just as curious as you, but it's almost like, well, the redevelopment agreement stinks from 2002, and maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, but it's a signed legal document, and we can't get out of it, except with amendments, and we're in the process of trying to get the amendments through. So we will entertain the <coughs> issue of going to interfaith and saying, 
Will you rip up your 35-year agreement that you were given legally by the city and ask for two people from the city to be on and one of you? And we'll ask them, but I'm guaranteeing you they're going to say no, but we will ask. We might do with the hotel. Okay. Thank you. Motion to adjourn public. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. I have a... Uh, a, a statement to read, uh, a statement to make, and I'm going to read it just so I don't, I don't blabber on. <clears throat> as many of you know, my son was diagnosed with neurofibromatosis, which is known as NF1, in December of 2014. We learned of his diagnosis weeks after the 2014 election, where Asbury Together swept into office, but before the swearing in on January 1st, 2015. NF1 is a genetic mutation that causes tumors to grow on the nerves. NF1 manifests, manifests itself in a wide variety of symptoms, from a few small tumors on the skin to ones that grow on vital organs that cause death. Due to, the, due to the diverse manifestations of NF1 symptoms, we knew Michael's future was always going to be in question. In January 2015, I started my term as city council member with excitement, but also concern for my son's health. Last month, we received the call days after his annual brain and neck MRI. The MRI showed a spot in his brain near his thalamus, tumors in his optic nerves, and a large tumor in the middle of his cervical spine. The news shocked and saddened us. We are seeing specialists at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the Children's Nas National Hospital in Washington, D.C. Michael's treatment options will be determined by how fast the tumors grow. We had hoped to deal with these questions about Michael's future much further down the road. Due to Michael's health issues and my need to focus on my family, I am stepping down as, as Asbury Park City Councilman, effective April 30th. Running for and being on the Asbury Park City Council has been a true privilege. It has been rewarding to be part of the remaking of City Hall, and, and I'm confident the new city manager, Michael Capabianco, will run City Hall in a professional and responsible manner. I know the Asbury Together team will continue to guide the city in the right direction. John, Amy, Jesse, and Yvonne are the hardest working the most honest people I've ever been around. I miss you all dearly. Finally, I want to thank the residents of Asbury Park. Beginning with the One Asbury campaign, through the Asbury Together campaign, and as a councilman, it has been an absolute pleasure to get to know you and the stakeholders of Asbury Park, our little city. Getting to know and work with you through the last four years has been by far the single most rewarding part of this experience. Thank you. I'm just John and I thought he was the hardest working guy on the campaign. When you're running a campaign and anyone in the audience who's, who's ever been involved in them, they're extremely stressful. So when John and I were screaming and cursing at each other, Joe was the level-headed person to pull it together. When we would do door-to-door, 90% of door-to-door was people were lovely and invited us, us in for wine and, and cheese. But there was a number of doors that people weren't lovely. And whenever I wanted to quit, Joe was like, you got to do five more houses, you can't quit. Whenever I wanted to collect my thoughts, Joe's like, you got to push through. So, um, we're going to miss you. Jesse, you want to say anything? I think Amy said it all. You've been rewarding to the city of Asbury Park, the council, and to me. I've learned a great deal from you. And um, will you have our blessings and we'll be praying for you and try to stay strong because it's not easy. You know, we all love you and care for you. Thank you. Out of this campaign, what I gained was a new friend. And I'm so very grateful for the friendship. And Joe is passionate about this city. 
He works really hard for the city. He loves the city. And he has put his all into making sure that Asbury is a real, is a better place than it was when we first came into office. So I too will miss you. I thank you. The key word is, again, we all thank you. Uh, your, your time, your effort. I, I, I used to think I, I'd put a lot of time in. I would read everything and anything. Joe would read it twice. Joe has his notebook. That I finally got a little one like it. Uh, I, I want your notebook before you leave because there's so many facts in that notebook. He always took great minutes. He was 100% pro Asbury, will always be 100% pro Asbury, but it's a tough decision. Joe's making the right decision. Family comes first. And his family is the most important thing in the world. I hope we all pray for his family. And maybe one day down the road, Joe will be back up here again when everything works out. And I cannot thank you enough. Uh, it was a pleasure. We fought. Joe and I fought many a times. No more. You're doing it wrong. I don't give a damn. I'm going to do it my way. But uh, a, a great Asbury Park resident, a great friend, and I wish you and your family the best of luck. Thank you, everyone. And that being said, and I'm sure after the meeting, a lot of you will hopefully thank Joe. Uh, so obviously, we're dealing with state statues. Uh, there's a, going to be an opening on the council. And Fred, correct me if I'm wrong on anything. After Joe's resignation, we have 30 days to appoint. So we're going to be putting an ad in the papers saying anybody who would like to apply, submit a resume, blah, cover blah, letter. blah, cover letter to the city clerk within the next seven to ten days and we're looking probably a realistic time frame the second meeting in may and that's after the fact and again joe thank you so very very much thank you okay we're on to item i accepted <coughs> of minutes i have the april 11th workshop session april 13th executive session april 13th regular session do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Okay, we're on to item J, consent agenda resolutions. All matters listed on the consent agenda are presented collectively to the City Council and will be considered for approval with one vote. These matters are to be considered routine in nature and there will be no individual discussion on these items. If discussion is desired by one or more council members as to any particular item, then said item shall be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. We have 2016-205, a resolution authorizing the payment of payroll in the amount of $882,534. Resolution. Oh, oh, Resolution 2016-206, a resolution authorizing the place-to-place -place transfer of Planetary Retail Consumption License 13033034013 for Bond Street Bar and Grill, LLC. Resolution 2016-207, ratifying, authorizing approval to add city manager and city clerk as signatories to city bank accounts. 2016-208, endorsing the submission of the 2015 Recycling Tonnage Grant application. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Second. Council Member Clayton? <coughs> yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Counc Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to item K, individual resolutions. We have resolution 2016-209. Resolution authorizing the payment of bills in the amount of $5,629,337.87. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes, except I have to abstain on 6 01 23 220 209. Duly noticed. Thank you. Resolution 2016 210, resolution of the City of Asbury Park making application to the New Jersey Local Finance Board pursuant to NJSA 40A 3 1 and previous approvals by said board. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? 
Yes. Resolution 2016-211, Resolution of the City of Asbury Park and the County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, making application to the Local Finance Board pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 2-51 and NJSA 40A colon 3-1 and previous approvals by said board. Do I have a motion? Move that. Second. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Councilman. Yes. yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Amy? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 20, 2016-212, authorization to apply for a transit village, village designation with NJDOT and if designated is committed to smart growth principles and implementation of the requirements and vision of the program. Do Move I have it. a second? Council Member Clayton? Yes. <laughs> Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. 2016 213 resolution authorizing consent to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Pro Protection permit for 2016 road program. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Ms. Stein. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-214, authorizing the award of policies and procedures, update and accreditation by the NJ State Association of Chiefs of Police, Police Accreditation Contract. Justin. Do I have a motion? Move, Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're on to 2016-215, authorizing change order number one for Springwood Avenue Park. Is there a motion? Move it. Second. Se Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. On to 2016-216, a resolution by the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park acting as redevelopment entity granting conceptual approval to Asbury Partners LLC regarding the summer in, summer experience installation on block 3802 lot 1 block 4004 lots 2 and 3 and on a portion of block 4502 lot 1.26 and referring the matter to the planning board for appropriate, appropriate approvals do i have a motion move it second Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to the introduction of ordinances. We have Ordinance 2016-18, Refunding Bond Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park in the County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, providing for one, the refunding of certain outstanding qualified general improvement bonds of the city dated June 25, 2009, to provide debt service savings, and two, authorizing the issuance of a not to exceed $4,200,000 aggregate principal amount of general improvement refunding bonds to the city to affect such refunding and appropriations, the, pro the proceeds therefore. Motion to introduce? Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for May 11, 2016. Two. We are on to second readings, public hearings. We have 2016-06, an ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and, and to establish a cap bank, NJSA 40A, colon 4-44.14. And I have a motion to open 2016-06 to the public. Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Are there any? Fred, Fred or Michael, give a brief explanation, please. Please give an 
it's best to be given by an example. Um, this is the one that I gave on Monday and then the previous week. If you don't go up to your appropriations limit of three and a half percent, say we can spend a hundred bucks and we don't spend it, we spend 90, we budget 98, you can bank that extra two dollars for the next year. This is establishing that extra money in case we need to use it in following years. That's all. It's not expenditures, there's no tax increase, it just allows us to do other things in the future. Any questions? Any comments? Move to close public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to adopt ordinance 2016-06. Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. On to ordinance 2016-15, ordinance of the city of Asbury Park authorizing the execution of a financial agreement with AEF2 Urban Renewal LLC and Savoy Urban Renewal LLC and granting a tax exemption. Motion to table. Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion tabled. On to Ordinance 2016-16, a bond ordinance providing for various 2016 capital improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the County of Monmouth State of New Jersey appropriating $1,750,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,662,500 bonds or notes of the city to finance part of the cost thereof. Motion to open 2016-16 to the public. Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. You gotta get up to the microphone, Rita. I'm sorry. Okay. Is this the money you talked about that we're gonna borrow and then get it from someplace else and put it back in? No, Michael. Huh? It. No, this is the bond no. ordinance. No, no. Hold, hold on. Michael's gonna explain. As I explained on Monday and the previous council meeting, this is our capital program for the year, including roads and general equipment. I know, but these, most of these people weren't here Monday, so they don't know what you're talking about. We're gonna pave roads and buy some equipment, including police vehicles, software, um, fire department improvements. Um, that's really the gist of it. Do you know how much our bonded indebtedness is? Not off the top of my head. I, I think you should look into that because you're getting too many bond issues here. Motion to close public. Second. Move it. Move it. Second. All in favor? Okay. I have a, a motion to table ordinance 2016-06 until May 11th as per bond council. Do we have a motion to yes. table? Oh, this is being tabled? Okay. Well, then we wouldn't have opened it. No, we want to have the... the Bond Council wanted us to open and close the public hearing, hearing as scheduled, right. but when it came time to vote, to defer the vote until the next council meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, motion to table. Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Okay, we're on to Bond Ordinance 2016-17, Bond Ordinance providing for various 2016 roadway improvements by and in the City of Asbury Park in the County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, appropriating $1,250,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 1,187,500 bonds or notes of the City of Asbury to finance part of the cost thereof. Motion to open 2016-16 to the public. Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Are there any comments from the public? Michael, please give a brief explanation. This is the road program. The first one was for the general vehicles and equipment. 
Um, this will be in part of and in tandem with the other road program monies from DOT and that were allocated, I believe, early last year. Um, the road program is scheduled to be out to bid May or June with construction to start in August or September. Anybody like to be heard? This is the paved streets, which I think everybody thinks we need to do. It's a simple question. Um, you know, they have the uh, Safe Streets um, Coalition. Um, and this money coming from there, have you tapped into all avenues so the burden wouldn't necessarily be all on the city and you can tap into the safe street program to kind of branch out and defer some of the, the grant money coming in from the state, the help that you turned down in the past? Is it possible that you've turned it? No, the city hasn't applied for or is going to apply for this funding cycle for safe streets. Safe streets is a very, very competitive grant program. Um, you need about a year to get all the data together. Um, the city was approached by the school about six weeks before the deadline was due to assist in, in their program. Um, they were going to apply to do improvements in front of, I believe it was the high school, um, yeah. which were just involved striping and curb repair. But the Safe Streets application, it's Federal Highway directly. Mm -hmm. so. I know of at least two towns in my career that have actually given back the money because it's so onerous to do that you're better off trying for the regular DOT municipal aid or doing the programs yourself. It's just an incredibly difficult, it's nationwide competitive. It takes a year to get all the information. So the city hasn't, we didn't recommend doing it this year. Myself and city engineer know that it's that difficult. We could look at it next year, but it is very, very difficult to get. So do you know safe. that there's a coalition in town um, for safe streets? Safe streets, as you're describing, is the Safe Routes to School program. There is the Complete Streets Coalition. Yeah. I know some of the members are here. Uh, Complete Streets is um, a policy a program of making sure that mm -hmm. everyone can use the roads. Sure. As part of the road program myself, I believe Kevin was there, um, Public Works, the city engineer, we made sure that every street as part of the program can accommodate every you know, pedestrian, bike, obviously car, as best as possible. Um, it's just the right thing to do. It's our policy. We try to implement as policies as best as we can. Um, it's a guide. So we've done everything we can from that fits within the roadways. It depends on width, you know, travel speed. But we looked at it. We made sure that everything could be as, as friendly for every mode of transportation, foot, bicycle, scooter, um, ADA compliance, we make sure we can do that. Thank you. Motion to close. Move it. Second. All in favor? Uh, Motion to table ordinance 2016-06 until May 11th as per bond council. Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? We're on to item M, yes. public hearing of the 2016 municipal budget. 2016-217, the adoption of the 2016 municipal budget. Motion to open the 2016 municipal budget to the public. Move Do it. I have a second? Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. At this time I'd like to invite our CFO, Mr. Gartz to give a, a brief update on the budget. And um, for everyone watching, please keep in mind that this is not a final budget. We are not adopting a budget tonight. The numbers can and probably will change dependent upon the transitional aid application that the city has in with the state. So thank you, Mr. Gartz, for coming tonight. Kevin, change, change seats with Ricky, please. <laughs> Thank you. Tonight you have before you the uh, 2016 budget for public hearing. 
the 2016 budget, if you exclude the grants, is up $1.4 million over 2015's budget. The major increases in your budget this year are health benefits, $430,000, fire salaries and wages, $350,000. Your pension bill for the police and firemen retirement system has increased $212,000. Streets and road salaries and wages is up $200,000, and administration and other expenses is up $125,000. Total tax levy for 2016 has an increase of $867,000 included. Your surplus that you're including in your 2016 budget to keep it balanced is $2.5 million. 2013, your surplus available to budget to use was $90,000. In three years, you've gone from, from $90,000 to $2.5 million. You have $4.7 million at December 31st in surplus to offset this. The uh, transitional aid that's included in this budget is $1,275,000, which is a decrease of $225,000 over 2015. That has been requested, and we have not gotten an answer on it as of yet, nor do we have an answer from the county on what our final rateable base is? The county pilot program, until they come up with the final rateable base, you can't adopt the budget even if you had the transitional aid number tonight. So, any questions? Any questions from the public? The 2.5 million surplus. That surplus that isn't usable because they're in authorities, as in the beach and the parking authority? No, that's not correct. Where, where's that? That surplus is in general operator. It's in general operator? Correct. And? Roughly 1.2 off the top of my head is not usable because it's not in cash. You need to have it in cash in order to use it. Okay, and with our bonding situation right now, uh, how much did we increase money to pay off outstanding bonds in this budget? Our debt service actually dropped two hundred thousand dollars. It dropped two hundred. In our operating budget, that is correct. And why is that? Because we paid off certain issues. We don't have this year to have to fund it. Okay, so speculative of a five-year period. If you're looking at what our budget situation is and the increases that we're getting, do you see us leaving transitional aid in the next two to three years? I would hope within two. And do you see any areas that we can increase to increase revenue to help us out that you suspect that we should try or the council should look at? I think the council has done a very good job on looking at all revenue avenues at this point. But your rateable base keeps going up, which helps the tax base, which helps you allow to raise more money through the tax people with your rateable base going up. But the fees and everything that you're charging out there at the current time, this council has done a very good job over the past two years on trying to collect everything that they can, and they've increased fees this past year on just about every department, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. so. so are we, <clears throat> I was looking at, and this doesn't, it's kind of outside the box. Um, you have waterfront property that we've put pilot programs on. Is that affecting um, the relationship with the school, the school taxes? that we have that need to be raised. And it looks like the school board is gonna be looking to raise. How, ma how many of these, should we be looking at doing any more tax pilots? Because if the school board is gonna be looking at it, is that cost gonna be pushed off to the residents? It's more of a policy decision at this point. Depending on what the pilot structure is, on how it would benefit this town versus the school, everything needs to be analyzed individually. <laughs> Do you have a wholesale uh, system that actually tells us from all the taxable rateables 
where we're, where we're deficient at? I'm not sure I follow your question. Do you have a software package that actually, if you looked at it, what the projected radio, rate, rateables are, where we could actually pick up more rateables? Do you have a software package like that? Well, I mean, right now, some people are extending it to a GIS program, which integrates that. It's, it's, some people are going outside the box. We have but. a tax assessor that assesses 100% of your properties annually due to the pilot program. So nothing should be missed. Well, yeah, right now you have, you have properties that was taken advantage of during this waterfront situation where they knocked down buildings where there could be buildings built right now, which would increase your tax rateables. A lot of those were increased this year because of the empty new, lots, new county process where in, and I'm going to be wrong with the numbers, but in the beachfront area, we picked up $80 million rateables because we could compare them to recent sales. There were no comparable sales. All of a sudden there were sales in Asbury, be it the K Hunt Hob Pro, pro uh, project. There were comparable sales in oh, what? Okay. K -Hop. There were comparable sales in Long Branch that showed what. Oh yeah, no, we we have the new. But what I'm saying right, so is, so we picked up eighty million dollars of rateables, and we're still. That's what I'm saying. We're still in the transitional phase, but we need transitional aid. But say there was a property during the uh, the redevelopment that actually uh, the eighty million dollars was picked up in the redevelopment. Zone just on the beach. Yeah, park. because yeah, well, because you're, 24 acres. Yeah, because you're building up, but there's more acreage that isn't developed on that had buildings that were knocked down during the like development. Like Ricky said, every every year, every property is looked at. Yeah, are we are we foreseeing growth on those properties? Which, if you didn't have a building, you have Absolutely. an empty lot. We're, we're foreseeing growth. Yes. No, I'm saying, what is our you know expected? Are, are we anticipating that as an, um, a, a development, master development plan over above the city to we, look at getting those? Rates? We can't anticipate an improvement. Taxation is based on land value and improvement value. If it's a vacant lot, it's taxed as a vacant lot. It's taxed as a vacant we can't lot. say that, oh, this lot's worth $20 million because they can put an 11-story <laughs> hotel. It's only what's present value of it's a vacant lot. I know, but those assessed values, like you said, you, have, you could have a property now that's worth $20 million because you can build on it. That and, would increase and, your rate. Of and that's what we're hoping and that will help us in future years and that's how we're going to get off transitional aid. Exactly. Right. So yes, we're looking at it, but like Michael says, we cannot anticipate it in a budget. We cannot put Oh, no, no. I know not anticipating, okay, right. but I'm saying in the in forward thinking, we're looking at the budget. If we're looking at two to three years, we should be looking at where we can maximize that effort to get us back off and be able to tell the public that you're not going to be looking at <laughs> big rate charges in the next three years because this is what we're doing. We're, we're looking at all projects being proposed and looking at what potentially they could be paying in future years once they're built out and how much that would help bring everybody taxes to minimum stabilize them and hopefully reduce them. This one, the people to know. Yeah, thank you. Rita? <coughs> Uh, maybe the CFO knows this. Do you know what our bonded indebtedness is? Do you have any Not idea? Not off the top of my head, no. Huh? Not off the top of my head. Not off the top of your head. Okay. Uh, did you say that the hospitalization went up 400 and something thousand? That's correct. 430,000. Oh, and what does that do to? Uh, New Jersey State Health Benefits rate structure on average went up 5.4%. We also, 5.4 percent, yes, that's on average. Some plans went up, up, up to 11 percent. So depending on what plan you were in, it increased that much. But on average, it was 5.4 percent. And about the pilot programs, uh, do you know the difference if it didn't have a pilot, what we're losing with the pilot programs? It can be obtained, but I don't know that off the huh? It can be obtained, but I do not know that off the top of my head. Do you know how many pilot programs we have? Roughly 16. 16? Mm-hmm. Well, I think that would be a good number to know. Rita, 
You don't even have to open it. Call up, call up and give us your questions. We'll get you the answers. Okay. And as far as, like you say, how much we're losing, I don't think we're losing a penny. I'm just going to take example. I'm going to make a piece of property. There's property A, and it was sitting doormat for 20 years, and they were paying $10,000 a year in taxes because it was dormant. They, they, they turned it into something a bar, a restaurant, anything. The first year, they're paying $50,000 a year. So it's, we're not losing anything. We gained five times what they were paying for a boarded up building. We've never lost a penny on a pile. You, you, oh, I think we lost a lot. We knocked down buildings that were paying 60000 that, That's different than That's different than a pile. We didn't knock down any building. Anybody who's come before this not council or, or past councils, even past councils, they, they, they made more than a, a empty. Steinbach's is paying more now than it was a boarded up building. I mean, that's a fact. People may not like it, but they are. I mean, everybody is paying more than if it was a boarded up building. I know, but when we were boarded up, we only owed five million. Now they don't know how much we own now. We'll get you that much. It's got to be about 72 million now. I think you're high. We'll, we'll get you that number tomorrow. That's very high. And a lot of it is on the sewer plan end. Okay, but we'll get you, we'll get you that number. Call, call with the specific questions, and we'll get you the answers. Thank you, Chair. Uh, John, um, and Mayor and Council. What I wanted to add, what we were saying was, they knocked down apartment buildings that were paying sixty-five thousand dollars a year taxes, and now they're paying land taxes, running parking lots or food trucks on them, and the deal is. We lost income on that that the taxpayers had to pick up because a place like Ocean Township was bragging in the paper last week that having no tax increase, and I think we're a better place than Ocean Township, and our taxes gone up here. But that's all I wanted to add. Thank you. Yeah, and, and you're right. And a lot of buildings were knocked down. It was again before our times, and they were knocked down. At past mayor and council couldn't. St if you own a building, you want to knock it down. We can't stop you. I mean, if you own a, if you own a, a house. Uh, there's a way to catch fines and beach fines. Right, but, but okay. we've picked, we, we picked that up. And as far as, what was your last? You said something at the end that I was going to. No, but that Ocean Township was crawling at that time. Oh, again, okay, yeah. The, and Jerry, you know, and we've told you 100 times, we've told everybody in this town, Ricky just said we're applying for $1.3 or $1.25 million of transitional aid. The state of New Jersey says we are not going to give you $1.2 million of transitional aid and let you reduce taxes. So we can either say, keep your $1.2 million and we're gonna raise taxes, now I'm making up numbers, 10 cents, or we'll take your $1.2 million and raise taxes two cents. So uh, your decision, you want us to turn down $1.2 million, we'll turn it down and we'll raise the taxes five times. Okay, and either do we. So we're, we are looking so forward to get off transitional aid. And when the big projects come online, you're talking about some astronomical dollars that they would be putting right into the city coffers, which will help the entire city. East, north, south, and west. Motion to close. Move it. Second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Motion to table adoption of the 2016 budget. Move it. We're not tabling. Well, we're. No, you, you don't we're, need to do anything. We're just not. Be a resolution at this point. All right. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Move it. Second. Council member. All right, it is. All in yes. favor. Aye. Right. Again, Joe, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.